marine blue into white. It's a little dark, so I'll knock it down a bit. Here we go. And just scrub in the shadow side of these clouds. As you can see, I'm not being in the least bit careful at this point. You don't have to be careful when it's underpaint. You only have to be careful when you're detailing. Good. All right, now this distant headland here. I want it to be very distant. And in order to get that atmospheric effect, I'll stay with the color of the sky. In a, uh, another lesson, I'll teach you about atmosphere and sunlight. But right now, let's stay with the, just know that I'm using the same sky color, but darker and not much darker to get the headland almost faded to nothing. There we go. That's the furthest headland, way, way back. Then scrub in a little more white at the base and work it up because if there's any light back here, it reflects onto the headland. Now the foreground, or not foreground, but the near headland will have a little color. The closer objects are to you, the more of the real, or uh, they call it local, color that you can see. The further away, the more atmosphere you look through, so the less of the local color. So the local color that I have chosen here is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'll just mix the burnt sienna and blue right into the atmosphere or sky color I already had. And see, it really makes kind of a gray. The reason for that is that burnt sienna is really an orange. So when you mix an orange with a blue, you neutralize them, of course, and you have gray. I'm going to burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, a little touch of alizarin. Here's this other foreground rock, and it's a little lump. Okay, it begins to speak a little bit. Clean my brush. I'm still using my number eight bristle. Clean the brush, and go back to the sunlight white. You know, you could actually, if you wanted to, make up a pile of sunlight, that is, whatever yellow or orange you use for your sunlight, into white. Make a pile of sunlight and make a pile of atmosphere, atmosphere being the color of your sky. And if you do that, you're ready to roll on just about anything you want. Now, I'm just going to scratch this in real fast, like this, and down in here, where the sunlight strikes. And if it blends with other things a little bit at this point, that's okay. This is very, very rough. This is only the structure. And up with these foam patterns as well. Where'd that red come from? Well, Don't be we are ready to start refining. We've got our basic structure. So I'm going to start right up in the sky and back to this pile of sunlight, which is cadmium yellow deep into white. Go right back up into the sky and where the sunlight would be striking the clouds, that's where we scrub in the color. Just like that. And a little bit over in here. See, we don't want too much contrast going on. A little over in here, a little here. Maybe a wisp here, enough is enough. Then, with my brush clean, just blend out some of the edges so we don't have anything sharp back in here. Don't want too much detail or anything that's going to distract from the main subject. I could add a little more ultramarine blue 
give a little more depth back in here, just to give more shape, show that there's something back there behind this cloud. There we go. And underneath a cloud, it should have a little more darkness as well. These are cumulus and these are stratus clouds. Just like if you understand what you're painting with the sea, you really ought to understand something about your clouds as well. I always try to. I'm certainly no weather expert by any means, but I do know something about the marine layer clouds that are in my paintings. Now let me show you here. You can gather a center of interest by attention to detail. Now, I have more information on this rock than on this one. So the attention to detail and the fact that it is in closer shows you want to look at this one before you look at this. Another way to gather a center of interest is uh, to put a different subject in. Uh, here's a seascape, clouds, headland, wave, etc. But here's a little sailboat sitting on the beach. Obviously, you're going to look at that. And, and obviously, it's too centered. <laughs> Should have been over or whatever. But anyway, that's another form of getting center of interest. Another center of interest, and this is the one I use the most, is contrast. I want the lightest light in my canvas or composition against the darkest dark in my composition. And where they touch, you see, that will gather more interest than